Hello and welcome to more Popper Cube. Uh, what are we doing today? We got um nothing that stands out to me actually. Grave Digger is good. Like I know that card is pretty nice. Um, Magma Jet, good removal. I think red might be the best color in the cube. Although, you know, maybe there are archetypes to explore. Dignitary is fine. Obviously not worth picking this early, but if you can get like Ephemerate Ghostly Flicker, that combo is pretty nice. I think I'm going to take Grave Digger. It is the only black card in the pack, really. So, like, that does give us outs to just cutting black very hard. And, uh, do I want to take Grave Digger? <laughs> I don't actually know for this pack. They're all, like, so medium. Usually I like to lean, like, lean towards a card that's, arch like, build an archetype. I guess I take Scatter the Seeds. That's probably good. Tokens is a good archetype. Yeah, we'll take this card. This also lets us cut green. Okay, all right. I'm <laughs> I'm very happy that I did not make that mistake. I don't know why Grave Digger was like so exciting to me. I think I just like the value loops of having a bunch of Grave Digger type effects. But yeah, yeah. Token aggro is the way to go here. Turn two sapling migration. Turn three scatter the seeds, and then I don't know something like a colossal might get going. Yeah, I'm gonna take this. Hope to wheel something from this pack. Ooh, Burning Tree Emissary. Man, I'm a huge fan of Pristine Talisman. I could also just pick up Triplicate Spirits here. Kind of move into green-white. I mean, that is... It's only third pick, so it's not, like, absurdly late, given there's actually a lot of good things in this pack. But this is a very good card, and I have not gone green-white tokens yet, so I guess we'll try it. We're not risking much by taking this either. That's kind of the benefit. Um. Okay, so... People did point out Ray of Command is an instant, which makes it way better than I thought it was. It It's like, I've I've played with this card, and I knew it was an instant, but it's been years. Um, so I just kind of forgot. This card is very good. Um, Mardu Horde Chief is good if we want to go full tokens. Seeker of the Way is actually kind of awesome as well, especially given all of these things. This can hit for a lot, and help us race. Maybe I just take that. It's also a two drop. And then there are some green cards, but those are better for like green ramp as opposed to green tokens. Like, yeah, Cycling Crows and Tusker is really good value, but it's a three mana play that doesn't actually affect the board. So if you're not going to use that mana or that extra land for, you know, playing like a Nessian Asp, it's not as useful for your deck. I'm going to take Seeker of the Way here. Countless Gear, Renegade. I might take Evolving Wilds. I think mana fixing is pretty hard to come by and like, these cards are good, but also like pretty replaceable. Maybe this one is better, but Evolving Wilds is also good with the Renegade. Um, keeping in mind that it is kind of a late Frexian Rager, but I think I'm going to take the fixing and see where we can go from there. Ooh, Kabuto Moth. I like that card. Pretty late Compulsive Research. This helps with tokens. Doom Traveler is a decent one drop, but I'm not in love with one mana play, so let's just take the Moth. This makes, like, combat very hard for your opponent. Okay, so black is looking pretty open, and I could take something like a Deathbloom Thalid. I don't think I want a Brindle Shout, so there's that. Warped Landscape is, like, pretty slow fixing. It's interesting, but maybe Blood Throne Vampire to go with all of the tokens that we have could be good. Because I know green-black sacrifice is definitely an archetype, so I'm going to... Hmm... I want to speculate because yeah I'm gonna speculate here I'll take the vampire okay wicked guardians not really a sign I really like silverback shaman this card is huge like it's a five mana five four trample so it already hits like above the bar for pauper cards then when it dies it draws a card like what <laughs> really what more do you need um I don't know why there's a green card that gives creatures flying but that's an option tranquil expanse is also fixing and there's like elephant guide but I'm going to take the Shaman. I really like this card. Okay, so now... <laughs> uh, maybe the packs were just weird and white is now open. Um, 5 mana, 4-4. Four, four. 5 mana, very large Vigilance is pretty good. Martyr's Soul. I like the Convoke and this can be absolutely enormous. I think I like the Convoke. Just, this seems like it can hit really hard. Um, it kind of... I don't know what's happening because, you know, that one pack had a lot of green, so... I think green-white is still open, and that weird pack was just kind of an anomaly. At least I'm hoping that's the case. Um, but I guess I will take Solitary, Solitary Emissary just as like a speculation into green-black. Okay, there's Ardenvale Tactician. That's good. 
So we're like dabbling in black, and we could end up black white sacrifice as an option, but I think this card's good. Man, like, yeah, like sign in blood going that late, what is happening? But then also Nessian Asp is like just a decent card. Oh boy. I'm gonna take the Nessian Asp, I guess. Okay, yeah, like countless gears renegade, but also on Earth. This is so weird. Let's take the renegade. Bloodflow Connoisseur, Diabolic Edict. I really am wondering if I'm supposed to be black white. I know I keep saying that, but I'm just investigating the possibility. So white, I think we can agree that that's the main color I should dip into. So Stormfront Pegasus or even Loyal Pegasus are both great options. Um, one is a one drop and can't do anything on its own. I think this card is probably better and then we might be able to wheel this. If we knew we're in black, Vicious Offering is awesome. Like, we don't actually have much removal. I could also go three color, but I think that's generally unadvisable in this cube. So I'm just going to take the Loyal Pegasus, Hope to Wheel Stormfront Pegasus, and go from there. Also, Pugin Leech is awesome. I like this card a lot. Oh, like, there's a Carrion Feeder. <laughs> that's like the card we want if we're going Sacrifice. Um, Angelic Purge actually is pretty good removal just to like get through troublesome blockers. Snuff out's also great removal. There's actually a lot of good things here. Safe hold elite, like persist and things. This helps with tokens. So yeah, it's just rough. This card's not that great and Silverback Shaman is good, but I don't know, maybe I am supposed to be black white. Carrion Feeder is a good card. I'm going to speculate and take the Carrion Feeder. See where that gets us. Call the Calvary, that's the card we want. Four mana make two two twos. Those are tokens. We can sacrifice them. Can bulk stuff. Um, Pillory of the Sleepless is great. Maybe that is a card we want. It also hurts them. No, I'm gonna take this. And the reason is we still are not a hundred percent certain whether we want to be black white or white green. It's looking like black white is better, but I, I would rather have a card that's gonna be good in any deck, and then probably wield the narrow black white card rather than take a narrow black-white card and then have green be insanely open this pack. Um, Inspired Charge, man, I like all these cards. Honor Guard, Inspired Charge, Sigil Blessing is great, but I think I gotta take this with all the tokens we have. Just lets us hit really, really hard. Um, Coarse Skyfisher, does that do much for us? We can bounce uh, Tactician, the Renegade. It does some, and it's also a 2-3 flyer, so that's pretty good. Um, not missing out on too much else. So we'll just take this guy. Savannah Lions is a 1 mana 2 1. Probably just take Forsaken Sanctuary though. There is a possibility I go 3 color. And. Oh, Borrowed Grace. That's pretty good too. That's actually quite good if we end up tokens. Just kind of pump the whole board, kill everything. Yeah. All right. I'll take that. Oh boy. Um, I like Tithe Drinker, and Petrid Goblin is pretty good. I mean, this is a card that gives black-white reach, which is not, you know, it's something that it's missing. You know, you get your opponent to like two life and they stabilize. Um, having this in play just makes that not the case. You can just kind of keep extorting them and killing them. I'm going to take the Tithe Drinker, actually. I feel pretty confident about black-white being open. Um, okay. I actually like Disowned Ancestor. I did not. <laughs> I guess this card's good. I have no idea. Um, this is probably not an Angelic Renewal deck, so I'm just going to take the 1 mana 04. There's our Pegasus. Midnight Scavengers gets back a creature with 3 or less, but I think we're a bit more aggressive than that. And Pegasus helped with that. Okay, so yeah, I think black-white is where we're supposed to be. I'm getting that feeling more and more as this pack goes on. Um, I kind of like Snuff Out. Just kill something for free. Yeah, let's take Snuff Out. Um, Crippling Fatigue is pretty good. Jungle Hollow, um, basically, because I don't know if we can really splash Scatter the Seeds. I think this card is really, really great, especially with something like Blood Bloodthorn Vampire. Like, play this at an instant speed, but I'll take the removal again, because I, I don't think I want to be able to hit double green. I know you can pay green with Convoke, so like, if we do happen to cast Sapling Migration, then Scatter the Seeds is easier to cast, but I don't really see that happening. Okay, Herald of the Dreadhorde is actually pretty nice. Um, good to sacrifice with like Carrion Feeder and things like that. 
I've yet to see Tortured Existence be useful, but I'm hopeful. We might get there, I don't know. Unfortunately, this cube is only up for like a very, very short amount of time. So I don't know how much opportunity we will have to do that, but we'll see. Viserys Seer, Rhizome Lurcher, Harrow. I'll take the Seer, I guess. Whoa, that's pretty late Terminate. Also, War Flare is very good. I'm gonna take Terminate. Is Red just open and I'm missing it? I don't know. This is a weird, weird draft. Um, like a Tended Knight, Disfigure is really good. Passivism is kind of an all-star here. Because, yeah, actually I think Passivism is the pick. Because a Tended Knight and Glint Sleeve Artisan are similar. They're both three mana planes that make two creatures. Obviously this one's better because it gives you first strike. But, uh, I don't know. This can also become a 3-3. Three, three. So, those are good. And then you have like some Undying stuff. Whereas passivism is like two mana basically kill anything. So I'm going to take that. It is kind of bad against like the bounce decks. That's not the end of the world. I think raise the alarm. Passing on an eye blights ending. I just took removal. So now we need some more tokens. And that's kind of the perfect one for us. Terror is very good. Ooh, Plague Versalka is good. I think Plague Versalka might come around. Also Pyrotechnics is kind of an amazing card. Oh, actually, what do I like better, Terror or Tragic Sleep Slip? Because I have a lot of um, Sacrifice. I think I want... Uh, let's see, I already have Snuff Out. So if I do end up playing against the Black deck, like it's possible that this really comes back to bite me. And then I can just take Tragic Slip and like uh, Bloodthorn Vampire my Sultai Emissary. It also only costs one mana. All right, I'll take Tragic Slip here, only because I have Snuff Out. And then hope to wield Plague Drusalka to replace Viserys here. Um, Undying Evil is pretty nice. I like Knight's Whisper, and I also like Gallant Calvary. I also... <laughs> I've been reading this card as Violent Pact, basically since the first time I saw it, and that is just not even close to correct. <laughs> so I apologize, and I guess not in advance, I just apologize. Um, but I think I might want Secluded Step. Because I have a ton of playables. Yeah, I'm going to take this. Knight's Whisper is also good, but this is a land, right? We we seem to have hit the amount of playables that we need. So taking cards that are still going to have value, even though, you know, like, after I hit my playable count, I think is where we want to be. This is just a land that can become a spell. And that's great. This card, human a 3-1 that can gain flying. I'm on board. Passing. I like this card, but 6 mana is a lot. And we don't really have a way to discard it, so... Ooh, Kingpin's Pet. I also like that. I like God's Willing. Consume Strength is good. But, again, Extort just gives us a way to... Oh! Okay, we did it. Battle Screech is kind of amazing. Wake Dancer is so good, too. But Battle Screech, that's, that's the card for us. Okay, we have Battle Screech and Triplicate Spirits. I'm very happy that I went into black. Green felt pretty cut, but it just took me a while to get there. Um, Desert Final Payment. Sacrifice a creature, destroy a creature, two mana instant. Yeah, I'm on board with that. I, it's it's kind of weird. This is actually a deck I would like Sparring Construct for, but hard to pass up that. Okay, well, a Tented Knight and this and like all these cards wield. Um, probably this is what I want. It's basically be between this and Butcher Ghoul. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take a Tented Knight. I think that's better than Glint Sleeve Artisan. Um, here I can take the guild gate, although whenever another creature you control dies, put a counter on this. So this is actually a really good combo with other sacrifice. Because we can like play this, exploit it, give it haste, sacrifice the rest of our team and hit for like seven in the air or something. Or we can take an Orzov guild gate. I'm gonna take the guild gate. Okay, we got the plague Rasalka. That is awesome. Um probably Undying Evil. Like a pretty good one mana trick. I don't want a 3 2 flash, most likely. I don't want to play against Pounce, I guess. God's Willing is okay. Morgue Theft. A lot of cards that I'm confused about. Um, okay, so we need to make some cuts, actually. I think at this point we have better removal than Crippling Fatigue, at least for the main deck. Kabuto Moth. Yeah, this deck's actually <laughs> looking more and more exciting the more I look at it. Coarse Skyfisher. It is a 2 3 flyer. So even if we're just bouncing a land, that's Fine. Yeah, so the yeah, the reason I took the guild gate is like I have a million playables. So again, we just want to upgrade our mana base. And what do we 
Probably not main decking Undying Evil. I don't really feel like I need to main deck Viscera Seer. I already have um, some other really good sack outlets. Borrowed Grace pumps my team. Battles Inspired Charge pumps my team. Is this card good? It is hit as a 3-1. I think that card's good. Probably this card's too slow. Oh, I also have Carrion Feeder? Okay, this deck's insane. I didn't realize that. Um, <laughs> What do I even cut from here? This deck's like, it has everything. I guess Tactician's kind of like a two mana play. Snuff out costs zero. This also costs basically zero. Jeez, is this card too slow? It might be. I, I kind of wish I had the, the creature that made a 2-2 two -two knight because I could bounce it. Somehow this card might actually just be too slow at four mana. That's kind of ridiculous. Same with this guy. Although, yeah, I, I could definitely just cut those and go kind of streamlined two and three drops, play 16 land. Possibly 15, but I like 16 with a cycling land. And then, oh, Seeker the Way is so good here. I think I like Kabuto Moth. 3 mana 1 2 flyer is already a good rate. And it's just like, you attack with a 1 1 and it suddenly has 3 toughness. Uh, what do I even do here? <laughs> I honestly don't know. This is a 1 1? Yeah, okay. Maybe this is just too slow for the deck. Like, I have quite a few sack outlets, so. Like having both Bloodthorn Vampire and Bloodflow Connoisseur might not be that good. And I mean, this is just way, way worse than Carrion Feeder. So I could see that being the case. And then Passivism, Raise the Alarm, Pegasus. I like the Emissary. Skyjack seems pretty good with tokens because it just, it's a 3-1 most of the time. And then I can like side it out if they have a lot of things that deal with X1s. I like Martyr Soul because I can convoke it out and it'll become a 5-4. This is hard. This deck's very good. Maybe I don't main deck this card? It seems awesome, but I also have a ton of other good removal. So I could just bring this in if they're playing small creatures, because against some like controlling decks, this card's going to be terrible. I can see that. Like We just want to be streamlined aggro, game one. Is there anything that's better than what I have going on? I don't think so. This is probably as good as we can do for now. So we have a few black cards. Four, nine. Um, I want to play Carrion Feeder turn one pretty often. So that's five, seven, eight, nine, ten white, and six, seven, eight black. Yeah, I'm okay with that. We also want a lot of swamps for snuff out, because you really don't want to pay mana for this card. So here is essentially our curve. That seems pretty sweet to me. See you guys round one. All right, we're playing against Reading is Tech. We're on the play. That's bad news for them. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, this looks like a turn two Tithe Drinker. I guess it depends how we want to sequence it. I think I'm gonna play a Swamp because that signifies that we might not be super aggressive. Because generally the white decks in this format are pretty aggressive, whereas black can be controlling. It probably doesn't matter at all, but yeah, let's try and get some extort going. Show chat, thanks opponent. Opponent said good luck. Probably that might not have been super easy to see. Porcelain Legionnaire, okay. That's fine. Final payment, okay. Uh, so I could just pay five life, kill that, get in for two, and extort, or I could do a lot of other things. Kabuto Moth doesn't actually help this get through, so I think I'm just gonna play the Pegasus. Because this represents two extra damage next turn anyway, so like, Basically, if I kill Porcelain Legionnaire and attack, I get in for two. If I play this and then attack, I also get in for two. Well, that's not ideal. They should bounce the Tithe Drinker, I think. Uh, okay, that kind of makes sense, I guess. Countless Gears Renegade. Okay, so they're doing kind of a lot. Given this change of events, I kind of feel like just going final payment on the Legionnaire and passing turn. Might be a good idea, but I really want to get creatures in play. And if I get Kingpin's pet down, then I can like double extort all of these plays. I take five. Yeah, let's do that. So I can't extort, but if I draw a land, then I can double extort all of my two drops. And that'll mitigate all this damage that I'm taking. And this is even good through passivism. Okay, evoked Aether Snipe. If they have Ephemerate here, like sure. I'm probably not winning if they have that start. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, it's just Cloud Shift. Still insane, right? I mean, this start is very good. Turns out I would have 
saved a lot of life by just final paymenting early. There's a swamp, so we do actually have some game here. I'm at 13, so we have to actually final payment the Aether Snipe. That puts me to 8, and then I take 5. But then I have Tithe Drinker up, so I can start regaining life. Okay. And I don't want them to blink Aether Snipe in response. So I just kill it now. And unfortunately I cannot extort. That's a great start by the opponent though. Take 5, I go to 3. And then we hopefully come back. Oh, I'm pretty okay with that. Yeah, I guess I could just trade off too. Yeah, I'm cool with this. I don't love that, but we can at least block it. We also have a tragic slip. Mm, so I'm going to go Stormfront Pegasus with Extort. Pass turn. Probably just trade off here, and I might tragic slip the Porcelain Legionnaire. I want to get as much life drain out of this as possible, I think. Because we're, we're not really aggroing them out, so we need to get like max value out of every single card. Okay, so I'm going to tragic slip this now. Fortunately can't extort, but this gives me information on what they're going to do. Maybe I should have blocked first, because if they give it... Oh, okay, so they bounce a thing. I take two. I don't actually know if that was good or not. It was a one-for-one one exchange. I'm at four life. Mm. <laughs> what do I do here? I guess I play Kabuto Moth. Kabuto Moth can then... I go up to five. I trade with Cloud Seer with Or no, I trade with Aether Adept here. I really want to extort, but I feel like maybe just playing two two twos this turn is better. No, because I just need flyers. I think I'm okay just trading Pegasus off with Cloudkins here. A one. Yes. They only have two cards in hand. And at this point, I'm basically like trading here, trading here, taking three, going to two. Porcelain Legionnaire will become a problem. Okay, now I go up to four. Okay, um, I need to get this down to deal with Porcelain Legionnaire or Kabuto Moth. I think his tech sent me a message. Oh, Snap Ganon didn't realize it was me. Yeah, it me. Please don't counter this. Just recording. Let's go Loyal Pegasus. No, I wasn't saying you would snipe. I'm just like, I'm not streaming. This is, <laughs> this is a YouTube video, no worries. I'm at four. I'm really curious what they could have in hand. They have four cards in hand. So I'm going to take three. Okay, what is in your hand? I got a lot of questions. Not many answers. Let's go Kingpin's Pet into Daring Skyjack. I can't extort, but that'll be for next turn. I just want to get creatures down so that I can play Martyr Soul for the full amount here. We need as many blockers as we can get. And if they don't attack, that's amazing for us. Yes! I think we've turned the corner. So they can make a 1-1 one, one flyer. That seems correct. Here's a planes. So the thing is to cast this, I actually need to, like, <laughs> I need a lot of things to go a certain way. Um, what do I do here? You control no tap lands, put counters on it. Maybe I just don't. We play land, that's for sure. They have a flyer, they have two cards in hand. I guess I can attack with just the Kingpin's pet, but then they just take it. I'm at one life. I can attack with these two and then play two blockers back. And I have only one flying blocker then. I don't love that. So let's just go ahead and play Martyr's Soul as a 3-2 and extort. And uh, maybe I just play Countless Gears Renegade as well, because then I can start attacking in the air pretty well. Because then I can swing with those three. Sure. So no extort here. But yeah, I, I like this because then I can attack with these three pretty safely. And still have like a pretty good force blocking back. Okay. There's a plane. So yeah, I mean, we have to start attacking here. Wait, that doesn't work. <laughs> I forgot he has first strike. Oh, actually, no, that does. Because these have... Um, four toughness, but then I activate here to keep him alive, and then if they have a kill spell on this, then I die. So I don't like that. But the longer I wait, you know what? The longer I wait, the worse this gets for me. 
Oh, they didn't even block. Okay. So keep the land in hand. Because I actually can, like, kill them next turn if they don't have anything. They have four cards in hand, but they might just be flooding really hard. Because they haven't made any plays. Okay. It's a land, but I think I just go for it, right? I can hit them for a good amount. Oh, this is a very challenging game. So, if I attack, like, what happens if I swing out? They can block one flyer so they take two they go to four and then they have to block two of these so they block here and here and then they have a two one back and i have this so that actually is pretty bad if i just attack like this it's actually not so bad although they have gold meta harrier and three blockers this isn't the worst attack i don't think i probably oh that actually was pretty bad i probably should have attacked with loyal pegasus so they do that, I pump you, put myself dead on board, because they tap this. Yeah, that was bad. I put myself dead on board. If I had just attacked with a Pegasus instead, I would be fine. Oh, they didn't! <laughs> they didn't go for lethal! Oh my god, that was great. Alright, cycle this. They conceded! <laughs> oh man, opponent. I know you were flooding, but... You had the win in the bag because I messed up. I put myself dead on board, so you gold meadow harrier, tap down kingpin's pet. This can't block. You had two damage. I know I had two cards in hand, so it looked like you were kind of like throwing it, but if you have the chance to go for lethal, it's generally a good idea to try it. Um, so what do they have? Not a whole lot. They had a lot of blink, so... God's willing is creature you control. So I don't want sorcery speed removal. I think... Passivism is pretty bad against the blink that I saw. Um, Edict is actually okay against blink. And they didn't have tokens, really. So I'm going to make that switch. And then the rest of my removal is instant speed, I believe. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, I'll keep this. Turn one cycle. So this is why I take secluded steep, steppy. Whatever, secluded step so highly. is like, yes, I did have a four land hand. And obviously I drew a land, but that... Our opening hand was four lands, but it was kind of like three because of this bad boy. Um, let's go Swamp. Bloodthumb Vampire is kind of a threat, but I'm also kind of okay trading it for their Daring Skyjack. Yeah, that worked out pretty good for me. Kingpin's pet coming down. They missed a land drop. Um, so if they have a counterspell, that's like kind of annoying, but acceptable. I don't know why they would keep this hand without a counterspell. Uh-oh. That's not good. That's not good. Let's go ahead and just cast... <laughs> oh, I really don't want Battle Screech getting countered. But it's so good if it resolves. I think I'm just going to tap with Ardenvale Tactician. No, it only hits for one. Let's play the Pegasus. Pegasus Extort. I'm basically waiting for them to tap out for my Battle Screech turn, because they're blue-white. Blue-white doesn't really have a way to deal with this. And I want to use Tragic Slip to disrupt, like, Ephemerate. Deputy of Acquittals, sure. They say no. Missing land drops again. That's, that's brutal. Aw, oh, man, opponent. So, I'm going to give people the speech. Opponent, you're probably watching this. It, I understand how tempting it is to get frustrated with magic in, like, Flood and Screw. But you got to remember that Flood and Screw in, like, variability in lands is kind of one of the main appeals of magic like this land system makes every game unique in that like you have a different number of resources to play the game like right now you have seven spells in hand and yeah you're very far behind and i don't know you know what those spells were in your hand but it, it it's like if you wanted every game to be perfectly controlled you would play chess and chess is a great game and it's fine but it's the same thing every time you know um, I don't know, like, it, it feels more interesting to, like, okay, I'm mana screwed. How do I win the game given that constraint? Or I'm flooding. Flooding is a little bit more rough, which is why, you know, things like this are helpful. But again, like, I don't have that many resources. How do I win? Um, as an example, the last game, we both drew quite a few lands. Um, but my opponent still could have won if they had just go for, gone for it. And I was able to, like, bluff by, like, holding lands in hand with an extort creature. So it seemed like they didn't have the way to win. I don't know. I'm probably just rambling, but it's just I don't want people to get frustrated with magic. 
I don't know. <laughs> See you guys next round. <laughs> All right, we are here for round two against Barry Leo. Let's go first. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's keep this hand. Uh, unfortunately, Orzov Guildgate enters tapped, but it's still pretty nice. I mean, this is the downside of playing aggro and pauper. If we were able to go turn one loyal Pegasus, turn two like Seeker the way, and just kind of go off that way, it would be pretty nice. But as it stands, we're just gonna play Seeker. It hits the hardest. And um, if we draw like a non-creature removal spell and kill something, we gain life. It's just good. So they might have counter magic. We want to hit an untapped land. Okay, that's not the worst. So I'm just going to attack for two. They're going to bounce him. Okay, then let's play Stormfront Pegasus. And then we're going to play the Steppy, the Steep. Sure, don't mind that getting countered. Play that. Go. It's possible I should have played Loyal Pegasus because it's not as good, but I really wanted to double spell. So no, it's not possible. I should have just definitely done that. Um, I'm actually kind of okay trading this. It's also a pretty good bluff. I'm just gonna attack. I don't mind trading here. Nice. I figured they wouldn't because it's just like, it's so scary, you know? So we can go Loyal Pegasus into Bloodthrown Vampire. And then hopefully set up for a battle screech. Although I might, next turn I guess my play is going to be Martyr Soul into a Tented Knight. Uh, nah, battle screech into swing out seems also pretty good. <laughs> Flashback, tap you, you and you. It's a four power flying, yeah, that's pretty good. Hit here and here. They really can't block. Are they, are they dead? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's 14. I could put them to 2 if I sacrifice everything. That's awesome. So I guess Loyal Pegasus does hit for 2 against Stormbond Geist. So I'll just sacrifice this. Make this a 3-3. Three, three. So they're basically trading Demir and Guildmage for a bird. Unless they have like Ephemerate or something. God's willing, sure. That's... That's an okay exchange by me. How did they scry? One card on bottom. Ooh, Kingpin's pet. So I'm gonna play you. This is now a 5-4. And then I guess I just jam a Kingpin's pet. I don't really want to do it pre-combat. So we can threaten with Seeker of the Way, although I kind of like him being in play in case I like draw a removal spell. And if I attack with Loyal Pegasus, they just trade. So this is kind of awkward, but I think I just attacked with Bloodthrown Vampire. Stormbound guy's doing work holding off the uh, the flyers here. Well, it takes one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I can go for it, but I think I just hit for one for now. And then I go Kingpin's Pet. And that way... The extort like makes their life lower. A tented knight I can extort and then like sacrifice all of this. And I really want to use Bloodthorn Vampire in a turn where I like swing out so I can sacrifice creatures that get blocked. Because they're like dead here now that they just tapped out. Yeah. So a tented knight plus extort gives me like a lot of things to sacrifice. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, you're not coming back from this. Cause I swing out. They like have to block here and here, and then they take one, two, three. Yeah, they just die. Okay, so blue white, that's what I saw last time. Didn't see any flicker, but I am a little bit worried about pacifism against blue white in general. But it is pretty good against that like flyer. Yeah, we'll just keep the deck the same. I didn't see that much, so. Uh, I got a mulligan this. I'm on the draw, but we can do better. Oh boy. If I hit a planes. This hand becomes okay, and I think on the draw that's okay. I keep this, I just get rid of Inspired Charge. And then we hope to draw a plane so that I can like play removal, extort. My opponent's start is pretty slow, I can like hit them for three with Daring Skyjack. There you go. <laughs> Easiest game of my life. Sometimes you gotta play for that, you know? I mean, it was pretty likely we would hit a planes in like the top two draw steps. Um, I'm actually going to run Tide Drinker into Essence Scatter, as much as I don't like that. Oh, okay. Um, the reason being, I want to extort when I cast Daring Skyjack. They both hit for the same amount of damage, 
but this gets through blockers. Like if I had played the 3 1 and then they did something like this, I wouldn't be able to attack. But now I at least get one damage in pacifism. So that could have been. Uh, that should have been the card that does minus two, minus two with flashback, I think. I'm going to make that change after this, probably. Um, but for now, we play this guy with extort. And then pass turn. Yeah, this card is pretty good against what I have going on. And I bottomed the thing that gave my team plus two, plus one, which is kind of unfortunate. All right. That's some good value. Take it. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, one mana short here. Um, I can tragic slip the zombie army and hit them for five. That actually seems not the worst. Play the extort. Also, gain life off Tide Drinker. Set up for triplicate spirits with extort next turn. I don't really have to extort, but it does feel pretty good. Sure, Sandstep Outcast. You get two 1 1 flyers. That is. That is value. I think the attack was a little bit aggressive though, last turn. Okay, well I get triplicate with extort. Maybe extort, yes. If there was mana tithe in the format, I probably would not go for this, but as far as I'm aware, there is no mana tithe. So, we got three spirits, baby. Favorite chimera, okay. Whoa, <laughs> whoa! That is overly aggressive, I might say. So these are basically the same, but I have the mana now to just go for pacifism. And then if they ephemerate or anything, I can just kill it in response. I can even extort. That's awesome. And I can even attack with Daring Skyjack. That attack was so overly aggressive. They go to six. Past turn. I'm at 22. Now they don't attack with the spirits. And now they just die to extort. Oh boy. Let's take a turn off here. Cast this. Extort. Um, yeah, I can just wait. No rush to run my spirits into their spirits. Oh no! I forgot! Oh no! I forgot if I tap a land for extort, he's a 3 2. That was actually pretty big. It's like mostly fine, but that's actually unfortunate because I wanted him to be a one shot kill. Ah, oh, that was bad. Um, what do I do here? Kind of like attacking with all of these and just having like infinite removal up. It's hard for this to go too terribly wrong. This should be a 5-4. That was bad. And so they block here, here, they take two in the air, and then I just have like remaining flyers. I'm also okay trading here. That's fine. I'm just going to kill that with final payment. Live life. Target this. Store it. Yes. Okay. Despite that uh, unfortunate misplay, it's like you think when you cast it, it would do it, but it has to enter the battlefield with no tapped lands. Well, we're in the finals. See you guys there. All right, we are here in the finals against Halsey. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand, just deciding what I'm going to do with it. Because playing Loyal, Loyal Pegasus turn one doesn't... Okay, well... That makes it much more obvious here. We go turn one Loyal Pegasus, turn two Daring Skyjack, and probably just snuff out if they have a blocker. That guy's so cute. Um, let's go Swamp, Skyjack, go. This is just a two mana two two, and this can't attack or block until I have another creature to attack or block with. This card feels like they're probably control. Also blue black feels like they're probably control. So, like, the life gain, or paying life with snuff out, probably, whoa. Okay, I'll take it. Cloud can see her. sure. <clears throat> so, I guess this turn I'm just going to go for pacifism because I have, like, the mana available. Evolving wilds to thin my deck a bit, hit for five. And this is going to get a planes. Peace strider, no! Get out of here. <clears throat> They don't attack, that's a smart move. Get planes. Hopefully, uh, don't draw any more lands. Okay, that's acceptable. So, I don't really have any good attacks yet, but this is gonna be a pretty, pretty good turn. I'm just gonna go all in because I don't think I'm going to win not doing that. Do this, I guess. And I actually wanna save that for flying. Like, if they have Crypt Rats, sure, 
that wipes my board, but I'm not going to play around a card I haven't seen. And Pestilence would be pretty expensive. Evancar's Justice would be kind of brutal. So here they might as well attack with everything. And I'm just going to take five. Okay. So if they have a flash blocker, I have snuff out. I swing out here. Blink of an eye bounces him, sure. Now we get to go Seeker of the Way. Planes. They're at 12. Uh, they bounced him. I feel like I can just play Sultai Emissary, but this card does hit for like a lot. I think I'd rather do that. I'm playing right into Crypt Rats. We just gotta hope they don't have it. They attack like that. So I can I can monstrous the vermin and it becomes a 5-5, five five, so that hits me for eight. Snuff out actually cannot kill it. And I can hit them for one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I can actually kill them. So I'm just gonna take this. Like if they just play a blocker and that's it, I win. What do they scry? Two cards on bottom. Hmm. Another spell that would have been good to trigger Seeker of the Way. So I can just snuff out Omen Speaker and swing out. And that is lethal, I think, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, on the back swing, they can hit me for 8. This actually seems not so bad. So let's just hard cast this, because I don't want to pay the life. This goes for lethal. And then I have Sultai Emissary back in case, like, they need a kill spell here or something to stop this. And even if they do, I could just play Sultai Emissary. So they would need two kill spells. Okay, that doesn't do it because it has to block Seeker and then I gain life. I play you, so they're at three. They, they need Crypt Rats, and even then they go to two. Okay, got it. So they're blue-black stuff. There were enough targets for Snuff Out, but it's not the ideal card here. Um, this is minus, no, this is minus two. Yeah, I don't love that. They had a flash whisper agent, which is good. I think the deck's actually kind of just great as it is. We run it back. Yeah, we'll keep this. No black source, but we do have secluded step. <laughs> I've had this like every game and I just have absolutely no idea how to pronounce it. Um, I think I do cycle it though, because I'm likely to hit more lands with like three draw steps and specifically we want to hit a swamp so we'll just go for that and this hand's acceptable right it's lands and spells a good chunk of removal that's not good cycle um okay well i did not hit a land but if i still miss lands next turn i guess i can just core sky fisher i guess i could just core sky fisher now because that block's there. Yeah, actually, let's just do that now. It's not ideal, but it's where we are. Basically, this plays better in the worst case scenario, which is we don't draw land next turn. Because then I can at least prevent this from hurting me. Um, I'll still run into whatever you have here. Sure. I mean, disfigure was going to kill something anyway, so better now than there. Okay, so we did draw the land, so we missed out on Kabuto Moth, which is actually kind of a big deal. but. At least they didn't disfigure my Kabuto Moth, I guess. I'll take two, sure. We'll play a Morph. There's a lot of scary Morphs out there. I'm gonna run out of Tented Knight. I, I don't want Moth dying to like Skin Thinner or Shaper Parasite, anything like that. Okay, I don't hate that. There's our Swamp. So now I get to go Swamp, attack with Pegasus in the night. They take it. Deal. At that point, I'm just going to play the Kingpin's pet so I can get more extorts going on, I think. Although the Moth makes combat really good for me. Uh, let's play the pet. <clears throat> Shaper Parasite. Oh, Cloaked Siren. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of damage, but that's okay. Again, when you're extorting, the race is actually generally in your favor because you're hitting them and gaining life at the same time. Probably our best draw is just basic swamp because then we can like tragic slip and final payment in the same turn all right we take it a lot mm, planes is not the best but it's okay i'm going to run out kabuto moth and i will extort so they're gonna flip skin thinner now 
I'll actually keep back a tented knight to block, I suppose. Ruthless Ripper. Okay. Flipping up Violent Paul. I see. So they're going to kill something, make a 1-1 one, one flyer, block the Pegasus. That's actually pretty good for them. Oh, interesting. They kill the knight. Okay. Um, I think I do want to tragic slip their 3-2 flyer. But I'm going to let them decide whether or not to block first. I think they should block the Pegasus. They take 3. Now I kill this. I can't extort, which is a little bit sad, but that's where we are. I'm at 10. I'm going to fall to 7, which isn't so bad. <laughs> okay, that's bad. <laughs> that's not good. They also have Demir Guildmage, which, like, if I have any cards in hand, they could just make me discard all the cards in my hand. So the late game is very much in their favor. I have to take this. Planes. Not, not the best draw, that's for sure. Um, I kind of want to just kill the Demir Guildmage, as weird as that sounds. I think I want to just kill the Demir Guildmage, because him making me discard or drawing them cards is pretty bad. Yeah, let's attack with Kingpin's pet. Because I can cobble to a moth if they block with the drifter. So there's like no way they do that. Whoa. Okay. That's kind of weird. Fungal infection. That doesn't work, right? So it. Yeah. So it gets plus O plus 1. So it becomes a 2 3. That totally works. Hmm. Weird. So I can kill Demir Guildmage. Paying four life, go to three, or five life, go to three, and then I'll have two blockers back. I'm actually going to do that. Then I can extort. And I'll keep planes in hand. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's a problem. I go to one. <clears throat> Didn't expect the Aether Snipe. Yep, go to one. I can go up to two. Ah! All right, well, we're going to play this. No, because that doesn't block actually that good. No, it does because Kabuto Moth. Yeah. And that actually lets me stabilize if I can... Um... Yeah, that lets me stabilize a little bit. I have to chump block Aether Snipe. Maybe that was bad. I think I wanted to play Sultai Emissary to chump block with. Although they just attacked with Aether Snipe. Hmm. Okay. So I can trade Tide Drinker for Aether Snipe? I don't dislike that. If they have a kill spell, I should be dead, like, anyway. So I'm just playing as if they don't have one, because I, I can't play around a kill spell, really. So I will pump up here. Nice. Okay, that, that attack seemed bad. All right, that is a good card. But Sultai Emissary can block Ruthless Ripper. I just drew an actual spell. Extort. And this is where Extort just starts taking over. Play that, play this. We extort, we fall to eight. Uh, what if I just attack with Kingpin's pet? Two, two will become a three, four. And they can't really attack with Griff Vanguard because then I just kill them. Yeah, I like this attack. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm just gonna let this get in for two because Kabuto Moth on defense is also pretty good. So our blocks are here, um, here. They play a morph. I need to look up what shape or parasite does if they attack, but they did not. I mean, I probably still should look it up before I attack. That was an amazing draw. Uh, <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> I need to look up shape or parasite. Hang on. Just so we're on the same page. So it's a morph. Um, it's a 2-3, and you can give a creature plus 2, minus 2, or minus 2, plus 2. So plus 2, minus 2 is most likely. Um, so let's see. If I... Tap down both of these and swing out here, here, and here. This gains flying. That's five. This becomes six. And they can... Yeah, I think they're super dead because I can extort as well. Yeah, they're super dead. Okay, so I dizzying swoop, tap U2. We extort that. And now I have lethal flying. They have to react. They have to act, and if Shaper Parasite activates, I can just negate it with this. And I also can play this as a defensive creature later. Oh, and they have to block this too. Like, they have to kill one of the flyers and, like, block Sultai Emissary. This seems good. So, I don't know how many spells we extorted here, but if someone wants to count up, like, exactly how much this Kingpin's pet did, or the Tide Drinker, I feel like it gained, like, six life and did six to the opponent. 
which is really, really, really good. Okay, so it looks like they have something. I'm okay with this trade. In fact, I kind of prefer it. Hey, it is Shaper Parasite, so they have to give this minus two plus two, which feels pretty bad. Oh, I see. So it they just get to choose? Let me show game log. I guess I don't get to react here, but if they do plus two minus two, obviously that's bad. Minus two plus two, I would hit them for four, they go to one. I'm tapped out and they have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay, we just pump. So they, yeah, they can survive, but I play this on defense. I manifest the top card, which was a planes and then I cast you. I can't extort, which is unfortunate, but I felt like having more blockers back was better here because I can just draw any spell and just extort that spell. And so for those who are wondering how I knew the, sh the morph was this, there are very few cards that they could play as a morph holding up three mana in these colors that would do anything else, you know? Um, like Skin Thinner is the other good morph, but that has five mana up. And they like just the way they're playing makes it seem like they had this particular trick. Opponent has come up with a plan. We'll see how it goes for them. Swing out. All right. I feel like double block here. Take four. I don't think there's anything in the format that does three to me in blue black. Oh, Grey Merchant. Grey Merchant does something in the format that does three to me in blue black. This block seems fine. And I can still kill them through a Grey Merchant with this play, which is totally a card they would sideboard in. Okay. That, I really wonder if they had it. That was a sweet... Wow, okay, the full 306 right there. Sorry there's a garbage truck going by my house, but you probably can't hear it. This deck was awesome. I'm... Yeah, I'm very happy with how it turned out. I really didn't get to do too much triplicate spirits, but it was actually worse than I thought it would be because six mana with Convoke is actually kind of a lot. Battle Screech was great. Extort was actually way better than I thought it would be. And then, I mean, free removal is insane. Th this deck was great. Um, yeah, hopefully you're enjoying these. If you like this deck, maybe subscribe to see more. And I'm going to be pumping these out. So see you guys soon.